I know that if I trained Joshua, me and Sugar Hill trained him for this next fight, he'd definitely beat Alexander Rusek. So you'd be prepared to help Anthony Joshua for prepare free. For free. to beat Usyk? For free. Because you believe he could with the right training? For sure. Tyson, we're back in Las Vegas. It's the third fight. Um, were, you, were you ever in doubt that this would happen? Did you think it wouldn't happen at any point? Yeah, I thought that this fight wouldn't happen. Um, that's why I ended up in a court case, because it didn't happen within a certain amount of time. Contracts had expired. We were planning all the fights, hence the AJ fight. Mm. Um, and all of a sudden, we had a court case, and the judge decided that Wilder should have his rematch, even though his contract had expired due to COVID, which was fair enough. Mm. So it was what it was, and it wasn't meant to be. And guess what? I always said the Joshua fight wouldn't happen, even when it was, when it was supposed to be signed, and it wasn't. On the, before I came out, I spoke to a dozen people inside the business and they all said the same thing. They said, you're not ready, you're not focused. And I've got to tell you, I'm looking at you here and I've sat opposite you an awful lot of, over the years in front of you. You look as focused as I've ever seen you and as determined as I've ever seen you. I don't know where people would get this I'm not ready from. Like, where would, would that come from? Like, Is it because of the training camp? The fact that you didn't have a 12-week training camp? I never have a 12-week training. I don't train for that long. Only a fool trains for 12 weeks. Do you know what long I need to train for or if I'm already fit? Three weeks of sparring, I'm ready. So that's perfect. Perfect. I've had a good seven weeks. Plus, I had a month off before that and then I had another seven or eight weeks before that. I had about six months before that. So people just assume that you're carrying loads of weight. I'm looking at you. You look slimmer than I've ever seen you look. Your face, your face looks absolutely sharp like you're fighting tomorrow. Yeah, I'm 100% ready. I don't make excuses. I've got no excuses to make. Like, if I would have had, like, a... A week training camp. I tell you, i got nothing to hide. I've had a great training camp. I couldn't have had a better one, actually. I don't like big, long training camps. Maybe everyone should take a leaf out of my book and not be doing all these long training camps. It's stupidness. If you're already fit and you're already, like, in shape, you haven't got to lose five stone, then three or four weeks training camps enough for any man if he's in the gym training. And what about earlier this year when you were out here with Billy Joe Saunders? Yeah. Because people mistakenly believed that was a training camp. There wasn't a training camp, was it? You were just out here. I was out here on a, a bit of a training holiday supporting Billy Joe. That's all I was doing. Me and my son, Prince. I was training every day. I always train every day. There's no... My life's a training camp. I was training twice a day. I was doing runs in the morning. I was doing a bit of boxing in the afternoon. And that was it. Like, there was no, no big special thing. But I had... This year has been a non-stop training camp for me. So let me just reiterate what, what's gone on in my this year. So obviously, um, I was supposed to fight in December of last year in England against um Turkish guy, what's he called? Yes. Kabayel. Yeah, Kabayel. And it, it fell through with two weeks to go. I put seven weeks in for that camp, yeah? So that took me up like two weeks before the fight was going to happen in December, okay? So then Sugar Hill went home after that camp and he had two weeks in, in at his home, and I flew into Florida. And then he had another three weeks in Florida with Sugar Hill training. And then I came back to, to England, and then I was in training camp with my dad and Tommy for a month. That took me to February. Andy Lee started training in my gym with Joseph Parker in February. Then I, then I had two months with them until April 10th. I was training with Joe and with Andy every day on all the camp, everything. Um, and then I came to America after two months on April 10th for the start of the Billy Joe uh, month with him. Then I was training in America in Vegas here for a month. Then I went out to Miami for three weeks and trained there for three weeks every day. And then, then I came back to Vegas and started seven-week training camp for the Wilder fight. Mm. And then it didn't happen. I came down with COVID two weeks before or 10 days before, whatever it was. Then I had about four weeks off after the COVID. I had four weeks totally off, just doing a few weights and strength conditioning. And then I went straight back into camp after a month off. So that's a full year of training camp, yeah. isn't it? And there was the, the, the break in the second, the last bit of that was obviously when you were stuck at Alderhay for a while. You were stuck in Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, while, I, was, I, was turned out two, I was there for two weeks. That was including me month off, like. Yeah. So I had a month off after the COVID to there. I was two weeks there and two weeks over here. COVID. So, so you never blew, you never bloomed up to anything ridiculous in weight. And even while I was at Alderay, I was training with David Price, I was training with Christian, I was training with the boys, like I was running with my dad every day. Because I need to train, keep me going, need to focus. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, I never had any time off. I, I was at Alderay for two weeks and I, and I ran 12 times. But and it, I done like strength conditioning twice a week. But if people don't get to see you, if people don't get to hear from the you, the thing then, is, then why I'm not ready is because I've been off social media for so long. Bingo. Hey, I've not been allowing me anybody to put anything on social media belonging to me. Any training footage, any strength conditioning footage. Yeah. I've not done anything. Christian's not done it. No one's done it. Yeah. So when you're not on social media, all of a sudden you've gone on a mad bender <laughs> because the world's controlled by social media. <laughs> or so it seems. And you've put on seven stone. And, and I've put on trained. 32 stone. I've not done a day's training. You know the score. But it's mainly my rivals who, who talk like this. Now, I've seen Eddie Earn said, he's, I'm not ready and I'm not focused, but... Wouldn't you think he'd shut up now after his man's been beat again? And he has no relevance here in Las Vegas with me, talking about me. So why does it matter to him what I'm doing? Like, I don't get involved in his business at all. Don't care what they do. None of my concern. Does this feel slightly different, the build-up to this? I mean, do, do you feel yeah, the, the importance? Yeah, for sure. Do, do a bit of weight, on, not weight on your shoulder, but that kind of pressure? Do you, do I don't feel it? pressure because it's just a boxing fight. But it does feel totally different. Like, pre-COVID was totally different. Like, it was, it was a lot more bigger. This fight was massive. It was the biggest fight in, in 50 years, me and Wilder. And there was that much press to do whatever, and, and it was a joke, really. But now it's just like, this is the first bit of press I've done, and I've done a couple of interviews on Zoom. Mm. And I'm, I'm like, wow, massive fight. This is it. Mm. But this is the COVID world now, isn't it, I suppose? Mm. People can't travel over unless they've got a work purpose here. So it's um it's crazy. It's crazy that the fight um of this magnitude, people can't come and watch it and whatever, but it is what it is. Now we know in the second fight, which was basically round thirteen of the first fight, so to speak, I know you consider this to be what, round twenty, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. And that's understandable. But in 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 the second fight, you did exactly what you said you would do, exactly what Gordon Ramsay, the chef, and exactly what your father said he would do, and everybody in your team. Gordon Ramsay bet round seven, and my dad as well. Not, not only did Gordon Ramsay bet round seven, he said that you'd drop him with all sorts of punches <laughs> twice, and he actually said live, he said he'll drop him with a body shot. How, where did that come from? I don't know. He's a, uh, He definitely knows he's boxing, or Gordon does, that's for sure. But the point I'm trying to make uh, in my classic roundabout kind of way is... Did you, you caught him? You caught him by surprise, then Wilder, and you never let him off the hook. You took good shots from him, and you kept going to him. That element of surprise is surely gone. He knows what you can do. He knows you can move like the first fight. He knows you can get up like the first fight, and he now knows you can hurt him and push him back like you did in the second fight. The element of surprise is gone. Does that make it a harder night for you? Not really. I don't believe in all that element. I know there's a great book out there that people so much love called The Art of War, and it's all about deceiving and deception and the element of surprise, but. I'm not a deceiver. I'm not a deceptive person. I like to tell everyone what's going to happen because then it's up front and they already know it. They can prepare for it. You know, if someone can, can prepare for it, it usually means they give you a better challenge. That's what I'm here for. I'm not here for no easy fights. I'm here for good, hard fights and to put on a good show in Las Vegas and test myself against the best. And that's what I'm here for. I'm not here to just knock Wilder out one round. If it happens, it happens. But I would like a challenge. I've trained hard enough now and I've, I've been in this game long enough that I need challenges to raise me up and raise my game. Do you feel like you're running out of challenges? Yeah. Or there are a few challenges on the horizon? I got Deontay Wilder. He's my biggest challenge and he always will be because he's got that ability to close the distance very quick and land hard punches where there's nobody else in the division mm. who can do that. Not even the smaller guys. Not even Alexander Rusek can close the distance as quick as Deontay Wilder mm. and do damage. He might close the distance and hit you in the face and do no damage. A Wilder can close it and KO you. So he'll always be the most dangerous. And you mentioned earlier on there, Joshua, you didn't think that fight would ever happen. Well, it's certainly not going to happen you know, immediately. You reached out or you said some things about Joshua afterwards, which were, which were brilliant. Like you said, after he got knocked out, knocked out by Ruiz. Have you had any contact with him by any chance for any channels? Uh, no, I haven't because I've been concentrating on my own fight. And if I don't concentrate, I'll, I'll suffer the same uh, fate mm. as him. But I know that if I trained Joshua, me and Sugar Hill trained him for this next fight, he'd definitely beat Alexander Rusek. That's a fact. Yeah. And I would be open to doing it. That's I'd a great be very, I'd be very open for me and Sugar Hill to train him. I'll do it for free because I don't need the money. And I wouldn't take his money anyway. Mm. But I, I'd, 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 we would take on that challenge. Not and, a problem. So, I guarantee he beats him. So you'd be prepared... To help Anthony Joshua for prepare free. for free to beat Usyk for free because you believe he could with the right training for sure. 
And what would it, what, without giving away too much, what would it entail? What does Joshua need? What could Joshua get from you and Sugar Hill that would make the difference in the rematch? That I'd be telling now, wouldn't it? But tell me just a tick, give me a little bit. I'd give him the right, I'd, I'd tell you what I'd do with him, I'd give him the right information to beat Usyk, which I'm not going to say what, but um, I think everybody knows. But this, this information that I say you've got to train for, you can't just do it. It's not a game plan. It's not just like saying, right, do this, do that and do it. You have to train to do it. Yeah. And I think he could. Otherwise, every man could do it. Exactly. Yeah. So you still think that he's got a, an opportunity to turn that round, whereas an awful lot of people in the boxing business think he's got absolutely no chance in a rematch. I, I believe every heavyweight can win, can win fights, especially someone as big as him and strong and powerful mm -hmm. as him. He only needs to land a good couple of punches on Usyk and he'd knock him spark out. He'd be over. Um, Usyk's a very tricky boxer. I know what it's like to fight a uh, skinny skinny guy, <laughs> Zou Sharp. Fought Steve Cunningham, didn't he? He was a very good cruiserweight world champion. Yeah. Uh, 215 pounds, six foot three, chiseled. Yeah. Same know? dimensions as Usyk. Same dimension. He gave me one of my hardest fights I ever had. Mm. But what happened in the end of that fight, Steve? It was savage. <clears throat> It was brutal, wasn't it? Yeah, you did, you did what a big heavyweight should do. And I didn't do my outboxing him, did I? Because I was getting no. out of box, wasn't I? Yeah. I had to go to the well. Yep. And get the job done. Stick your elbow in his face and catch him with a right hand. Knock him spark out. He did. Only time he's ever been knocked out. Mm. Not too shabby. No, it was not too shabby. Uh, j just, just quickly, and thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. we're close, close to fight night. I'm, I'm sensing that you would still like to fight Joshua. I know you didn't think it would happen, and, I, and this has nothing to do with baiting online, no social... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get the sense that you would like to put your skills against a rejuvenated Joshua. After I beat Wilder, which Wilder's a tough test for me, but after I beat him, I would have liked to fight Joshua. But it, it just seems now he keeps dropping decisions and stuff all the time mm. that the reality of him beating me is getting less and less. Mm. So people, will, they still lose. They still pay for the fight, still want to watch it, but it's not as interesting anymore. But if you had a spectacular rematch... Even with a rematch, it's like, is he really going to beat the Gypsy King, a six-foot nine-man mountain who we've never been beaten 13, 14 years as a pro? Yeah. And you've been being beat by kids on two, three weeks' notice and the Cruiserweight. Although the Cruiserweight was a good fighter, and so was a kid on two weeks' notice, people don't see that. They just see a fat little Mexican guy yeah. And a, a cruiserweight, pumped up cruiserweight. Mm. Only real boxing fans know how good Andy Ruiz was. How dangerous. 110 amateur fights and 105. Mm. And Ruiz, Olympic gold, this other guy, Olympic gold medalist and all that. Even Ruiz was an Olympian as well. Yeah. Went to the Olympics for Mexico. Mm. You, you know, and I'm coming, I'm coming to the end, honestly, there's only a couple, a couple left. The, um, when I look at what you've got coming up, when I look at that future, what's keeping you going then, Tyson? Because it's not money. And if it's not belt, and if it's not a massive showdown beating the Brit, what's getting you out of bed in the morning? Because there's nothing else, Steve. It's what I've lived to do. There's nothing else. I don't have anything else. Like, my brother Shane, he has his animals. He, has, he keeps, like, hens and stuff. Gets eggs. On he's the farm? Got, yeah, he's got, like, a, some cocker spaniels and things. And he loves to walk them and go across fields and all that sort of stuff. That's his passion. After, when he comes home from work... That's what he loves to do. He loves to get out and about with the animals and all that. And that's his hobby. I don't have any hobbies. My hobby's training. Yeah. Which you need, though. Which I need, but don't forget I've sampled everything else in life. I've been down the, uh, the other route to going out drinking and partying and messing around. Casinos and whatever else there is. Nightclubs and bars and restaurants and all that. That's good for one day, but it's not a lifetime thing. And there is nothing else for me. When boxing is done, like there is nothing else. I've I've done everything I wanted to do in my life. Like I don't have any other ambitions. I'm not a businessman. I know that. I'm not someone who wants to venture off into other things. I've no interest in anything else. I like to stay in my own lane and keep my business to myself. Like mind my own business and don't get involved in anybody else's business because every time I've got involved in other people's business, I always wind up getting burnt because I'm a fighter, a boxer, and I don't know anything about anybody else's business. And if I try to get involved in other people's businesses, I'm just a newcomer who knows nothing. And there's plenty of people out there, <laughs> clever people, who can um, take you to school on their job, but then again, put them in a ring with me, <laughs> and it'll be school time in my job. So I like to just stick to my own thing. I'm just a normal, humble type of man. I just don't do very much. I roam around Morecambe and go to the gym and back twice a day. Like, and if I go on a holiday a year, great. I hate <laughs> holidays. Can't stand them in my sight. 
I'm a workaholic. I love being at work. And it's not physical. It's not manual laboring, but it, it's very physical and it's very mentally stimulating what I do, boxing and all that, lifting weights and running. It's what I love to do. I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to be a property developer, a car dealer. I don't want to be anything. I just want to be what I am. And when I'm finished doing what I'm doing, that's it. I don't want to do anything else. I want to rear my kids up and my family and be left alone. And that's it. But that's probably the hardest thing that you can ever be, yeah. is left alone in peace and have a bit of peace. Because peace never really comes, does it? That's lovely, Tyson. Absolutely lovely, man. Thanks very much. When that bell rings, it's going to be a war.